You know, one of the things I love about doing this show is finding out how people make their fortunes. I've interviewed a male stripper, a chili sauce manufacturer, an instant noodle aficionado, a tiny house architect, the list goes on and on. But today's guest, she takes the cake. The empire she's building, well, it's built on snot. Yeah, snot. It's a very runny episode 451 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Well, I say, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Reed. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing phlegm. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. And if that's not enough and you are itching to fast track your marketing and business success, then let's get personal with a one-on-one coaching session with me, which you can book over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Big episode today. Small business owner Laura Klein takes us inside the world of snotty noses. <laughs> and don't worry, the show hasn't turned all physiological. Snotty noses is actually the name of her business. Another listener shares what marketing is working for them and as a result takes home a swag of prizes in this week's Monster Prize Draw. Plus, I've got some pretty exciting news about Elton John's Oscar After Party and what marketing lessons we may learn from it. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Now, as you may know, one of my favourite types of guests to have on this show is a long-time listener. A business owner who has a huge amount of respect for marketing and someone who's actively implementing the ideas they pick up from listening in. Well, that sums up today's guest beautifully. Here's what she said to me in an email just a few weeks ago. Hey, Timbo, let me know if you'd like to interview a long-time listener, tick, an awesome mumpreneur, tick, who's been in business for five years, has cracked the $1 million mark per year, mainly from a little battery-powered snot sucker. (laughs) Hint, hint, it's me. (laughs) And the email was signed off by Laura Klein, snottynoses.com.au, gadgets for good health and good sleep. Well, she had my attention, so I called her up for a chat, only to find that she was running a very serious little business, <laughs> one not to be sneezed at. <laughs> Thank you very much. I promise, I promise that's the only dad joke for the entire episode. Snottynoses.com.au is an online store with 25 SKUs, six staff. It's had some serious media coverage and it's turning over one point, or it's turned over, I should say, $1.7 million in the past 12 months. So let's go and meet the woman behind the battery-powered snot sucker, Laura Klein. All righty. Well, it, I was. I was a primary school teacher and I took leave and had one baby in 2008, second baby in 2010, third baby in 2012. So it was busy times. And as you can imagine, there was a fair bit of snot around our house with three kids under the age of four. Um, and a year earlier, I was looking through a parenting magazine in Brisbane and I saw this ad for a snotty aspirator. And even thinking about that now is so old school. I mean, who even reads parenting magazines anymore? Like there's no, there was no such thing as Facebook ads and shoppable Instagram links back then. So here I was reading this magazine and I saw this gadget and I thought, oh, it probably won't work, but the baby's so sick. I've tried everything else. I'm just going to buy one. So I did. And it was brilliant. It cleared the baby's nose and the toddler's nose and they could breathe and sleep better. And I just was like, wow, this product is amazing. And I spent the next year telling all my mum friends about it. Oh, you need to get one of these and it's really good. And then I lost the little nozzle thing that goes on the top. And so I rang the distributor who's on the Gold Coast and I needed to buy a new nozzle. So he sent me my new nozzle and he sent me a brochure about being a work from home rep. You know, a bit like um, oh, yeah. like an Avon lady. Yep. You know, you buy a box of stock and you sell it to your friends. 
And I thought, oh God, I've never really sold anything before. And then I sort of realized, oh, well, teaching's a bit like a sales pitch. You know, you need to communicate with your audience and, you know, you need to make a connection. And I just went, well, look, what have I got to lose? I'm just, I'm a stay-at-home mum, mm-hmm. so I may as well. And so I bought a box of stock and I sold it to my friends. Um, and at that stage, and away, you know, I got my first sale in a week and away we went. Was that an awkward thing, selling to your friends? Because, I mean, whilst it's sort of like network marketing, although it, it isn't really your, in your situation, was that an awkward thing? Because you're a teacher. You're not a salesperson. <laughs> well, I guess I just, they'd, they'd heard me rave about it for so long before. And at Playgroup, you know, we're all standing around drinking coffee and talking about snot, which is just so <laughs> lovely. Um, so I just, you know, I just put it out there. I said, look, I have these for sale. Do you want one? And, and they bought one, you know, just because they were curious and they had babies that were sick as well. So look, I had no website. I had no flyers. I had no email marketing. I had no Facebook page. Um, I was just, you know, putting it out there, um, handing out a few flyers at kindies and local playgroups. That was it. At that point, you've bought a box of um, battery-powered snot suckers <laughs> and you've sold them. You were looking for an out, right, of out of teaching uh, because of your creativity being stifled. Did you think at that point, was there a moment where you, did you have an epiphany? Did you go, this is it. The snot sucker is going to save my everything, my life, my marriage, my kids' noses. Yeah, well, I I sort of did, but I, I didn't sort of take it as a serious business, I suppose. I, I still was thinking, no, once the kids are a bit older, I'm, I'm going to go back to teaching because I, I loved teaching. It just is, you know, so wonderful. But I was on leave with the kids. So I actually did. In 2015 and 16, the kids are a bit older and the business was still running part time. Um, and I decided, no, I want to go back to teaching just part-time. And I did that for 2015 and 2016 while still being a mum and running this little business on the side. So what's running a business on the side look like, a, a side hustle? Is that something where you get home, you can't wait for the bell to ring like all, the, like all your students <laughs> and you're racing home, getting all the jobs done and then working into the night? Is that what it looks like? Yeah, it does. Look, I was only part-time teaching um, a couple of days a week. So I still had days at home uh-huh. um, where I'd be you know, feeding the baby a Vegemite sandwich at the kitchen bench and then wrapping snotties at the same time. So it was multitasking on steroids. It was crazy. And then I'd go and do my teaching days. And after about a, a, a year, I thought something's going to, Something's got to give here. Um, and look, it pains me to say that teaching had lost its creativity yeah, right. and, and flexibility. And it's a really hard gig when you are you have to be at the school where you teach by 8am and then yes. someone else, else has to drop your own kids at their school. And it was just, ah. And the business was growing steadily. So at right. the end of 2016, two years part-time teaching, I said, look, I'm going to have to let that go. And I decided that now is the time. I was going to give the business my full attention. What was that like? Because I I know in a previous chat I had with you, um, you said you're not a complainer and you probably, did you find it hard to resign despite the fact that you knew you were onto something? No, it was hard. It, 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 it was still hard. I, I absolutely loved being a teacher. Um, but teaching in 2016 or even 2019 is a very different game to what it was in the late 1990s when I first started, you know. I always sort of say, I didn't leave teaching, teaching left me. And it just, you know, and I think once your fire goes out and, you know, you're just drowning in data and assessment and... Beyond teaching... How many people are doing that? You know, we know there's a whole lot of cubicle escapees listening to this show and there's probably a whole lot of business owners listening to this show who the fire has gone out and they are looking for that kind of next next thing. What do you say to them? I say back yourself and if you have a passion, um, you will make it happen, whether it's a product or whether it's a service. Um, if there's, in saying that, there has to be a need for it. You've got to do some yeah, decent course. amount of, you know, research to make sure that there is a need for your product or service. Um, And that was the thing with the snotty. I could see that there was a need for it. There wasn't really anything else like it on the Australian market. And look, there's a thousand babies born every day in Australia um, and they are going to get six to 10 sniffles a year. I mean, my, my target market is just never running out. You know, there will always be people that need our help. So 2016, you leave teaching and you, at this point, you're still just selling snotty suckers. Yes. And um, you, you, have, you got, have you got a website at this point? 
Yeah, very quickly, actually. So when I started in 2013 with nothing, within six months, uh, no, not even that. Within two months, I was like, oh, I'm selling a few of these. People asking how they can order online. Boom, I've got a website. Um, and I look back to my web, my first website now. Oh, my gosh, it wasn't optimized for mobile back then. It was clunky. It was chunky, it. you know. We're not talking that long ago. It's not like 30 years ago. You're talking three years ago. Yeah, six years ago, 2013. Oh, it just, okay. It was a different a different marketplace, a different way that people shopped. People were still nervous about buying something on their smartphone. Um, you know, they just didn't. And now it is just so commonplace. It, that's what, that's the way everyone shops. So, so you, you, you've gone yeah. from um, sharing this idea at mothers' groups, doing flyers and letterbox drops in the local parks and, and suburbs to actually having a website. You get that website up. Is that then did – did, did it go quiet again? Because you've all, you've lost all your your face to face traffic. What did you do to get get traffic? Uh, well, that has just been a slow progression of learning what are the best ways to get traffic to your website. So, in twenty sixteen, I I made a couple of big decisions that really were a game changer. I outsourced my website to get a professional eye over it, and it was the best money I ever spent. It was optimized for mobile. It was optimized for SEO. And they are the sort of things that you, I do believe you need to spend money on to outsource to get it right. Um, and straight away, we could start to see um, a rise in conversion rate, um, which was fantastic. Once you got your website up and running, it's all optimised. You got some product coming in. By the way, the, the, the name Snotty Noses, was that a challenge? I mean, it's fun. It gets attention. <laughs> I, like, I get that. Was it a challenge yeah. agreeing on that? Or for you, was it like, this is a no-brainer? It was a no-brainer. I sent, you know, my research market for the name of the business was like 10 of my mates. <laughs> so what do you think? Which website name should I pick? Um, and they all went back to Snotty Noses because they had a giggle. They said, it's memorable. Um, it explains what you do. Um, and it's, yes, it's the one to go for. I wonder, now that you've got 25 products at snottynoses.com.au, is the name limiting because you go beyond just products for snotty noses? Yes, yeah, that's right. So we, our catchphrase is gadgets for good health and good sleep. Um, I'm still happy with the snotty noses name. Um, I think it is memorable. It usually gets a reaction. People either laugh or they go, ooh. Um, but if they're a parent with a child under five years of age, man, can they relate to it? So um, I'll always think that that was a, a good decision um, to, to stick with that biz name. Yeah, well, I, I must say, I mean, I've look, reflecting over the years of guests that I've had on this show, um, I have had one fellow who registered health.com.au uh, for his health insurance business, paid a lot of money for it, and it worked very well for him. I've had um, Australia's leading, um, I should know what the terminology is, what do, you, what do you call it when a bloke goes and gets the snip? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? Anyway, he calls himself Dr. Snip, and that's oh, working Snip, a treat yeah. for him. And I spoke to a lady a few months ago who's, who's creating a, an amazing chilli sauce that is um, almost beating Sriracha on Amazon sales, and she's called it Shit the Bed. So um, all those oh, names. I you... loved that interview with <laughs> Miss Bunster. She was fantastic. That was fun, wasn't it? So there is something in a name, and I think when you name something and you're proud of it, it brings something to the party when you talk about it to others. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, it's such a common term for me now. I don't even register. I say snottynoses.com.au a million times a day. For someone who just sees it, yeah, they're laughing or they're curious or they're putting it in their memory bank for the next time their baby gets sick. So you got this website up, you got a great name, a great product, um, you're a new business owner. Um, what was the most, was there a moment where you've, <clears throat> you know, woken up in a cold sweat going, hey, hubby? I don't know if I've done the right thing. I might go back to the old primary school. No. Look, there really wasn't because the great thing is, you know, my husband's got a, a good job and, you know, we were, you know, financially quite secure. This was never – I never had to make money from this business instantly. If I did make a little bit or even a lot, well, that was great but there was no pressure on me to sell 10 snotties so we can pay the mortgage. So not having that pressure was great. Just hypothetalising here, what if there was pressure to for snotty noses to perform? Would you still be here today? Oh, wow. Um, hard, 
hard to say. Um, but I'm not a I'm not a quitter, so I reckon I would have given ah. it a really good shake, um, even if I was under pressure to to build really quickly and and start getting a really good income from it in those early days. Interesting. Not a quitter. Is that a trait of Laura Klein? <laughs> Never give up? Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, you, look, you can't die wondering, can you? You right. have to give it a crack, whatever it is, you know, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, life in general. You just, you have to try, you have to back yourself and you have to know at the end of the day, well, I did everything I could to succeed. That doesn't mean every day is a success, my goodness. Um, the days you succeed are a winners and the days you don't succeed, well, they're called experiences and you learn from it and you get back up and you go again the next day. Oh, I love it. You could be a philosopher. <laughs> oh, I have, we have these little philosophy memes all around the office. Um, and my girls, my little workers just sort of smile and cheer and say, oh, no, here she is again with another another meme for the day. But, you know, <laughs> I, I love it. Oh, I love it's that. my jam. Laura, you, uh, the business is humming along. Your creativity, I'm guessing, now that you're a business owner, is no longer stifled. And if that's the case, how are you expressing your creativity inside the business? Mm, well, just in my the content that I create, I write blogs now. Who knew that I was a little writer? Um, so creating helpful content for my customers, creating cool graphics and ads for Instagram and Facebook, although I do outsource um, a little bit of that. Um, and just being able to, when you run a small business, one of the greatest things is I can see, a, I can listen to your show and get a great idea from another business owner about email marketing or making this sort of video or, um, you know, doing a referral program or whatever it is. And instead of having to run it through 20 business a, meetings a and put it through a SWOT analysis and, you know, analyze the buggery out of it, I can just wake up tomorrow and go, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if that works. So being able to decide for yourself, yes, I'm going to try that. Or eh, I don't know whether that might work for my business right now, but geez, I'm going to put it on a post-it note and leave it on my office wall and maybe come back to that at another time. So that freedom to just try things. You know, there's <laughs> you just have to try, try some things. So, yeah. You went through a whole lot of things and I totally agree with you. All those things you mentioned, I think that's the fun part of business. I mean, and particularly if you're a creative yeah. soul like you or I, I mean, we love creating all that stuff. Are you, it sounds like if you're blogging and creating little posters for social media and responding to people, prospects and clients on social media, are you really hands-on? Are you stuck in the in the meat and potato of the business and not getting sort of a high enough bird's eye view to look forward into the next five years or that's just how you are? That's just how I am in terms of like the meat and potatoes and the running of the business. In terms, I mean, I haven't packed a parcel for a really long time, except when we're really busy, it's all hands on deck. That's, you know, that's what my staff do. Um, they answer email messages and they, they wrap and they pack and they dispatch and they do all of that um, in, the, in the dispatch office, which is great. So I do get a chance to um, get that bird's eye, bigger picture view. In saying that, I'm not a great planner. Um, that's probably terrible for a former teacher to admit, but I am not a great planner. Um, people always say in business, oh, you need to have a five-year plan and oh. then you need to set out your social media posts and plan them for the next 12 months going Sorry. forward. And I'm like, uh, no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> if, um, if I see something I like, I'll... You know, I'll do that sort of social media post tomorrow. Did you listen to the interview I did with Janet Deneef, who owns a number of businesses in Ubud in Bali just recently? I Yes, I did. So she's not a plan. I mean, that lady has <laughs> so many incredible businesses from cafes and restaurants to resorts, um, travel business, um, uh, you know, like everything. And the, the idea of planning is is just not in her vocabulary. So there's two schools of thoughts on it. I've talked about it on the show many times. I'm not a planner. It bores me, you know. Things change too quickly. Things do change in business quickly. Oh my goodness! What I'm what I'm doing now was not what I thought I'd be doing twelve months ago, and who knows what I'll be doing in February 2020. Hopefully, sunning myself on a beach in um, in Hawaii somewhere. But nice. You know. Hey, can I tell you a funny story? Sure. I just got booked for an optometrist to speak at an optometrist's conference in 2020. Oh, does that you get that like nice. 20, 2020 vision? You didn't yeah, get, yeah, you didn't get I got it. it. You didn't get it. <laughs> 
Hey, um, <laughs> tell me, um, at what point did you go from having one product in the battery-powered snot sucker to 25? Where was that decision? Mm, pretty quickly, actually. Um, so by, you know, early days, 2013, I could see that there was traction for this product. Um, and I just sort of took a step back and said, okay, well, what other gadgets have I used as a mother that actually really helped me? What else can I bring into my product range? And so obviously when you've got a sick baby, you often need like a vaporizer in their room, you know, releasing the mist. And I, you know, I, I thought about that, right. Let's find the best one of those in Australia um, and and let's see if we can stock those. So I do. And I have a great relationship with the um, the distributor of that whole range of those um, aroma blooms and aroma snoozes um, that are now available on the website, um, the essential oils that go with it. Um, I'm a big fan of good sleep for kids. Um, I think parents can't function unless they're getting good sleep and kids can't learn and grow unless they're getting good sleep. Are you tempted to go broader and simply stock products for kids and young families? Are we going to go to snotty noses in a year's time and see toys and travel and all sorts of things? Because I imagine that would be an absolute temptation where you'd be all of a sudden become a the portal for, for young families, but you'd lose the niche. Actually, no. No, I, one of my favourite um, interviews with you was that beautiful hairdresser business coach. Her name escapes me oh, right yeah, now. Lisa Conway. Lisa. Oh my gosh, I have told so many people about that interview. And her, one of her favourite sayings was, a niche is an inch wide, but a mile deep. deep. And for me, I think I need to stay, there are already thousands of Australian websites selling lunchboxes, toys, backpacks, hats, clothing, shoes for kids. They can have it. I am going to stay true to my business name. I, I totally admire that. I think it'll be a challenge maybe going forward when you, you know, you just got to keep a lid on it. You've got a business coach. I think you were telling me it was one of the great um, tipping points of your business. So hopefully he or she will keep you honest around that because it would be a little bit seductive to go, hey, boy, oh boy, Snotty Noses is growing. You're already doing, you did 1.7 million turnover in the last financial year. I mean, it's growing. You've got the yeah. attention of mums and their kids in Australia. It would be very mm-hmm. tempting, I guess, to it some point just expand the range and offering but hopefully you don't and you maintain that niche let's talk about marketing how which i know you love because you listen to my show and i knew there was someone out there listening (laughs) you're gonna have to there might just be one listener and it's you and you have to listen to your interview next week which would be weird but we'll go with that um how do you stay connected with with your customers it's an online business you have no shop front how do you do that all right well from my business coach that i signed up with back in 2016 her main focus is email marketing. That's her thing. She says that is the silver bullet that can really scale your business. Um, I was skeptical, I have to admit. I'm like, oh, really? Um, but she said, yes, email is is the way to go. Um, so I found her um, through the Osmondpreneur Network and I started learning about email marketing and now ever, all of that is set up. It's all automated and it constantly brings in new leads and sales um, and I can track the return on every email that I send to both new um, and existing customers. So, what, what, What's the um, platform you're using, Laura? Uh, Active Campaign. Active, okay, so you're using Active Campaign. You've got that complete. Did you set it up yourself? Because sometimes these things um, uh, can be a little bit complicated. I actually went to an Infusionsoft meeting only yesterday and I uh, was talking to one of the Infusionsoft experts on this. And in, they've, in fact, they've just launched a product called Keep, which is a lighter version of Infusionsoft. They can be quite complicated. Have you set the whole flow of emails and email responses up yourself? Uh, the quick answer is yes, I did. And it was daunting. <laughs> when you don't know a technology platform, you are scared of it. You're like, this is this is too hard for me and I'm not sure what to do. But I just created a couple of little workflows and email, you know, welcome sequences and all of that for new customers and got it going. So I started to understand it. And then I did pay some money to outsource um, the setup of a couple of more complicated automations in the email marketing program, best money I ever spent because now based on what a, what product a person buys, they go into this particular sequence and through to make another offer and then they come out the other end either having bought 
um, and then or if they haven't bought that that follow up product, then they go into another sequence. So it's all sort of connected. I think the thing with email marketing, like you're saying at the start, I mean, you, people view it, and it's not a small business owners view it as. I get too many emails already in my inbox. I don't want to be contributing to other people's inboxes. But I think that's flawed thinking. Email marketing is alive and well. It is effective. And I think the challenge is to make sure that the emails you send, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're helpful and they add value to someone's life, whether that be um, educating them around a product or, or a service or whether it be uh, making them smile or telling them a story that leads to them taking them to your website. Email marketing. Marketing, these people have given me their email address and they said, yes, I want to sign up to what you have to offer me, whether that's information, products, offers, etc. So I, that's my intellectual property that I have. Um, so capturing someone's email address is the most important information they now can you give you. you do that simply because you're an e-commerce store. So by if simple fact that someone buys from you, you're going to capture their email. But... 95 of people who come to your website aren't buying. So what are you doing to capture their email address and what percentage of them are you capturing? Uh, called a lead magnet. So it's one of those, you know, after you've been on my website for 30 seconds, you'll get a little pop-up. Um, hopefully it's not sell, sell, sell. You know, considering our ideal customer is a mum with babies and toddlers, our lead magnet is a combination. It lets them download a free sleep guide and also gives them a $10 coupon to use on their first order. Um, and so that little sweet nugget is, yes, entices a decent percentage to type in their email address to get those goodies for free. Um, and then they might keep browsing. Um, they go into a welcome sequence um, of, you know, over two weeks, just a, a journey of this is the business and this is what we do. And, and you know, just explaining a little bit of my story. Um, and at the end of that two weeks, you know, they're usually ready to buy something, but if they're not, that's okay. They can just go on, they go off that welcome sequence and they go on to just the regular, I hate the word weekly newsletter email, but I don't know another word to explain <laughs> it. Those ones that I just send every week or two um, with a special offer, a link to a new blog, etc. You could call your weekly newsletter on the nose. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Thank you very much. Speak. The, invoice, like the yeah. invoice will be there tomorrow. Tell me um, other <laughs> marketing, because you do do a lot. You've given me a long, long list of things you do, uh, but yeah. I'm interested in a couple of uh, ones you've done, particularly for a small business. You did a flash mob video. <laughs> yes. The first day of winter last year, I thought, well, let's start off winter with a bang. What can I do? So I reached out to my email list. Um, segmented by geography, so I knew who lived in Brisbane, um, who would like to bring their baby along to South Bank in Brisbane and we are going to do a dance, a flash mob that's just going to suddenly start in front of the Brisbane sign um, and we'll record it and send it to the news channel. So we did. So it was fun. Um, we had like 50 mums and babies all dancing, holding one of the snotty aspirators in their baby's <laughs> nose um, as they oh, right. um, wriggled and jiggled. And would you believe the song I chose for it was Marky Mark, Good Vibration, <laughs> because, you know, that, that snotty gives you a good vibration up your nose. Oh, good. good. Um, Too much well, detail. It was just a bit of fun. But the news channels picked it up. We got in newspapers. We got on TV. It was it was worth it. It was creative. You know, the news channels and newspapers are looking for cool stories and ideas about businesses um, to, to fill, you know, to fill their shows and their papers. So PR is, is important. If you've got a good story or something new that's happening, send them a press release. I agree. Well, you look, you're looking at your website. You've been in the Sydney Morning Herald. You've been on the Sunrise TV show, Seven News, Studio 10 TV, plus the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I don't know what price to put on that. But, um, you know, you have. You've probably, you've probably got tens of thousands of dollars of PR coverage um, just through some simple little things like that. I'm interested in um, what role blogging plays in your business. Can you Could you draw, could you quantify the effectiveness of your blogging? Mm. Uh, blogging is in one part about keeping your website fresh and updated. Um, when Google takes a peek at your website through, you know, the bots, the, the, you know, whatever Google does to look at your website, they want to see that new pages are being created and information is being updated um, and that you have keywords that your customers might be looking for on Google. They are embedded in your blog. So, um, you know, there's a, a marketing reason why I do blogging. 
Um, but blogging often comes as a result of the questions that I get asked all the time by customers. And I'm thinking, well, if 10 people are asking me this, if 50 people are asking me this, I may as well write a blog about it um, and answer their questions. So now it actually is a really smart workflow because when someone says to me, um, can I use um, essential oils in a vaporizer with a newborn baby? I just send them the link to the blog explaining why you should only use plain tap water in a vaporizer from newborn to three months. And then from three months on, you can gradually introduce the essential oils into the vaporizer. So that, it you. helps me by answering questions that I get asked all the time and I just send them to the blog that, that answers the spare question. Does that make sense? It makes absolutely total sense. I love the idea that whilst blogging has a, a mass appeal and Google love it because it sees the website as being updated and containing helpful information, the one-on-one -on -one power of sending one prospect or one customer with a question, a blog that you've written, they just think you're an absolute legend and that you develop <laughs> trust with them and they're going to be coming, they're going to be a long-term customer and they're going to they're going to be an advocate basically and talk about your business to others. One last thing I want to talk about, Laura, before we wrap things up is collaboration. I love collaborations with other businesses and you are about to embark on one. What is it? Um, so International Women's Day is coming up and I'm a woman in business and there's lots of other fabulous women in business. So I reached out on Instagram um, to a couple of businesses that I know and then a couple that I didn't um, just saying, look, do you want to do a, a giveaway, combined giveaway? We all put in a prize um, and we, you know, send it out. We advertise it on all of our Instagram pages. We've got a, a parcel of $3,000 worth of prizes that everyone's come together, 30 businesses, um, some big, some have got 50,000 followers on Instagram, some a little, only have 1,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, but on the 6th of March, we're all going to blast that competition out to our Instagram followers. Um, and so that gets new eyeballs on my business. People that have never heard of me before are going to start following me in order to enter the competition. Um, and then it's up to me to deliver and delight them with great content on Instagram um, that they can follow. And, you know, one of those days they might just click through to my website. I love it. And love it. Um, and buy a product from me. It it costs me a hundred dollars in a prize donation. It costs a bit of time to put it all together and that's it. So it just I can you can do collaborations with email marketing as well. Um, you know, get a Black Friday, classic example. Twelve of us all came together, created an email with all of our offers and links, and we all blasted that out to our thousands and thousands and thousands of people on email, and it was the biggest sales day we've ever had mm. last Black Friday, the 23rd of November. It was massive. Well, the magic behind that idea is the amplification. So, you know, if you did that just alone, you would get just to your database and the people that you have the attention of. But when you start partnering with all these other businesses, some, as you say, some who've got 100, some who've got 5,000, that the amplification of that, and you're still just sending the same message. Uh, exactly. It, yeah. it, it's, it's massive. So I love mm -hmm. your thinking. Laura, I love your love mm -hmm. of marketing. I love your respect for it. And I think to me, it feels like that's why you've had such success because you've got a respect for marketing. And not only a respect for it, you just enjoy it. And it's fun, right? And it should be a fun it part is. of running a business. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and I just want to say also that the key to a sustainable business is also your repeat customers. You know, it costs a lot to advertise on Facebook and acquire a new customer when they first find out about you, but the money is in the follow-up. So, you know, they buy a snotty and they love it. So they know and like and trust you. And so they're open to buying all the other complimentary products that, that you have. So it's just, you know, you, you have to follow up. Um, and, you know, using a reward system um, to reward loyal and follow-up customers is just a no-brainer. There's so many easy apps out there. You just plug into the back of your website and you have an instant reward system. Everyone likes a reward. They like a free $10 coupon once they, you know, once they purchase a certain amount. It just is the gift that keeps on giving. Keeps on so giving. get into reward programs. Laura Klein, snottynoses.com.au is where you'll find her. Thank you for, uh, A, listening to my show for such a long time and, B, coming on and sharing your marketing gold. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Keep up the great work, Tim. Good on you.
Well, there you go. Snottynoses.com.au founder, Laura Klein. Uh, be sure to hang around after my top three attention grabbers as another listener wins big in the Monster Prize draw. But right now, here's what grabbed my attention from that chat with Laura. Attention grabber number one. I simply love the courage Laura showed in naming her business Snotty Noses. It would be have been really easy to come up with something more boring that didn't kind of polarise people, but instead she's gone with what is, a, I guess, a brave name. I love it. I wouldn't have thought it was brave at all, but many would. And I would encourage you, if you are listening uh, and you're about to build a business, start a business, maybe you're launching a new product or a new service or you want to package something up, be brave in the way you go about naming whatever it is you are naming. It will get you noticed and it puts some energy behind what it is you're doing. Attention grabber number two. I love Laura's quote, and I quote, there's money in the follow-up. Absolutely. There's the low-hanging fruit in your business that's right there now. Go and get it. Sure, go and chase some new clients. Go and do some cold calling. Go and do some networking. But don't forget, you have people, clients in your business that you've done work for previously that may need more work done for them from you. So go knocking on their doors first. There's money in the follow-up. And attention grabber number three. I love Laura's respect for email marketing. You know, I think many business owners think that email marketing's dead, it's full of spam and all that kind of stuff. Well, maybe if you spam people, yeah, it is dead. But if your email marketing is full of helpful content, helpful knowledge, tips and tricks like Laura's is, then that is a great way to market that beautiful business. If you want to learn about email marketing, go and check out episode 412, an interview I did with Dan Fagella, who takes us through an incredible email marketing strategy that made him a million bucks. That's what grabbed my attention. Whatever grabbed yours, be sure to block out some time in your busy diary, I get it, and implement it because that, my friend, is where the magic is. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Oh, yes, indeedly, doodly. It's time to reward another motivated listener for taking some serious marketing action as a result of listening to this show. And today's winner is... Graham from Ask Roz. I don't even know Graham's surname because he didn't actually give it to me in his email. There was a couple of other things he didn't do in his email as well, which I'll tell you at the end, but he's a winner nonetheless. Here's what Graham had to share with you and I. He says, G'day, Timbo. Love the show. Thanks, Graham. Our business, Ask Roz, is a digital information platform that provides information to users about what's on and things to see and do in the greater Blue Mountains region via a website and mobile app. Sometime back, I listened to you speaking with Dale Beaumont about the marketing power of digital magazines, ebooks, emags, etc. And whilst it was interesting, I thought nothing about it at the time. <laughs> Jeez, thanks, Graham. However, then I suddenly realised the light bulb turned on when someone said, it's a pity Ask Roz wasn't available as a magazine. I suddenly remembered that discussion with Dale and straight away we started integrating our EMAG option into the business. Fast forward, Ask Roz has now won the New South Wales Tourism Awards twice and been finalists in the Australian Tourism Awards. Love your work, Timbo. Thanks for the ideas, Graham. Graham, that is awesome, mate. I love the fact that you've implemented. You do lose points, however, because there is no email signature except for a mobile number at the bottom of your signature, at the bottom of your email, and you are using an at Gmail. What about an at business name? Email address would be a little bit more professional. But am I being picky? I don't know. I just like to see things like that from professional business owners. But Graham, I reckon you're professional. You have won as a result of entering the Monster Prize draw and implementing ideas. A pass to the American Express Lounge at Melbourne or Sydney International Airport, that's valued at 33 bucks. A Basin's Essential Pack from Sayer Skincare, that's valued at 79 bucks. A Carmen's Muesli Gift Box, that's 60 bucks. A My DNA Test Kit, that's 99 bucks. 
You've won a $250 voucher to spend at merchandise company B Promotive. You're getting promoted on this show. That's priceless. And you get a backlink as well. And we know how much Google love a good backlink. Backlink? I can't even say that word. You know what I mean. So thank you, Graham. Well done to everyone else. Come on, enter the monster prize draw. You win big. And you get to share the marketing gold that's working for you. Just send me an email, tim at timreid, reid.com.au. Tell me what's working. If I read it out on air, you win. That sadly brings us to the end of episode 451. A quick reminder that there is plenty more where this came from, plus my entire archive lives over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Got some great interviews coming up, including one with Steve Sims, whose business just organised Elton John's Oscars after party. If you're getting value from listening in, then please let other business owners know about this podcast, which is presented by me, Timbo Reid. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. Now get out there and take action.